Uh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, everyone, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, my name is supposed to Peter Daniel by the grace of God Almighty. Ah, uh, at this morning we are going. I'm going to give you some. Uh, the uh, I'm going to expose and explain some things that is going on in the Christendom, which is very very dangerous to the souls of believers. I'm talk. I'm not just talking to the people who are going to the wrong churches, but I am also talking about people who are already a born again and are living holy life. This is a common mistake. And I'm going to talk about it this morning. God, the Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want us to pray before we start. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Tana Rock of Aging, we bless your name because you are faithful. We thank you because you are the Almighty. Oh Lord God Almighty, we pray this morning that you open our eyes, you open our ears, you open our spirit, to give us the knowledge of your word, that by hearing the message, their life, everyone that here will be transformed and their heart will be opened unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of God, we are asking for your total visitation this money in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God Almighty, we ask, O oh Lord, I ask, O oh Lord, that you open the insight and the vision of your people that by by, 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 by preaching and by, by giving this message, their physical and spiritual insight to see the word of God and to understand the deep things of God will be opened. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. As I was saying, the Lord God will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, by the special grace of God, we are going to talk about the witchcraft practice in the church. The witchcraft practice in the church. The witchcraft practice in the church. I know this kind of things, my, you know, my, in one way or the other, make you wonder that witchcraft practice in the church. If I'm talking about church, I'm talking about the church of Christ himself. I'm talking about the church of Christ himself. This message is meant for all the believers. And at the same time, it's also meant for people who are just a church goers. Church goer. People who are just going to church. As a believer and as the only next candidate, you, have been, you might have been practice this kind of witchcraft and you didn't know that you are practicing it. As I was about to give message, you know, when I was writing down the message of God, this is one of the things that God mentioned to my ear and he gave me some explanation about it. And this is one of the things, is in fact, it's majority of Christians are going to hell because of it. Because in one way or the other, they are serving the devil. In one way or the other, they are worshipping gods of this world. In one way or the other, they are, you know, they are serving the things God created and they are not serving the creator themselves. And this is making gods to jealous and to send them to hell. There are some things I want you to know today, and I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to clarify so that you can understand that it is a witchcraft practice. That they mention the name of Jesus Christ into something doesn't mean that it is not witchcraft. I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. The first thing I'm going to mention this morning is the use of anointing oil. I know you'll be wondering that 
what did this man want to say? Well, he want to talk about the people who are collecting the only oil from the man of God, those who call themselves pastors, those who call themselves uh, prophet. I am not coming to that side yet. I am talking to all the saint believers. Do you, you do you know that you using anointing oil can take you to hellfire? I know it's going to be a, a kind of surprise to you. It can lead you to, but sir, it is written in the Bible. Yes, it's written. We are going into the place together. But this is what I want to tell you first. If as a child of God, you are still using anointing oil for anything that happened to you, you are going to hell. The reason is because you have taken the anointing oil as God over Jesus, over God. Yes, but I have prayed to eat before I start using it. In fact, it is a man of God that prayed to eat before I start using it. Whether it is a Pope of God, or is a reverend father of God, or is a man that fell from heaven that prayed to eat, in as much you use it and you believe in it, you are going to hell. We are going to look at the Bible about those who are to, to use anointing oil. Open the book, the Bible to the book of James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verse starting from uh, verse 14. James chapter 5, starting from verse 14. I will read here. It says, Is any sick among you? Is any sick among you? You see now, he's coming now. Let him call for the elder of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer, that's part of the thing, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall rise, raise him up, and if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Hallelujah. Now, the question is as sir, but there's anointing oil in the Bible. I didn't say there's no anointing oil. But this is what the Bible said. It said, let him call the elders of the church to anoint him. As a believer, as a Christian, you as a member of a church, you have no right to be praying over anointing oil I mean, for uh, 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 to, to be using a prayed anointing oil that a man of God has prayed over. Let's go into the Bible. It is against the scriptures. The only people that God qualified that they can undo anointing oil in the name of the Lord, the Bible says, is the elders. The pastors, the, in those Bible, they, what they mean by elders there is because they believe they count the apostle of the church as elders, and they also be uh, uh, when Jesus, uh, when Paul appointed the, 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 the in, in the churches, the churches where he has preached and established the churches, he appointed elders as uh, as the controller of the church. So he made the leader of the church as the one that is allowed to use anointing oil. You as a believer, if you are going to a church and your pastor say, bring anointing oil, let us pray to it for you. And you not take it home and ask places in a special place. And anything that happened to you, you take it, you drink it. Anything that happened to you, you take it and you rub your body. You are going to air. It's a witchcraft practice. It has turned to witchcraft practice because you have believed that by the using of that anointing oil, you shall get your healing. Instead of, instead of you to believe directly in the name of Jesus Christ, there's nothing that God has placed into our hand. Jesus doesn't place anything into our hand as a means of healing. The only thing that he has placed into our heart as a means of healing is the name of Jesus. 
the ministers, the pastors, or the prophets, or the apostles, or the leaders of the church, like uh, elders of the church, are the only ones who are allowed to undo your anointing oil and go and anoint the sick, not a, 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 just a, a, not a force in the church. I mean the member of the church, no. So, because in the Bible, anointing is placed as something that is being consecrated as, so, as a place of our, uh, it's only people who are in the place of leadership in the church that can handle it. If you look at when the Bible is talking about anointing oil, when it's talking, it's talking to Moses in the Old Testament, he, he, he personally instructed Moses that this anointing oil must only be used, only the priests should use it. And anyone that uses it, that is the Israelite uses, he said, they shall be cut off among you. So you should understand the kind of graffiti you have been committing to yourself. The Bible says something. He said, anyone that uses it, Apart from you, the priest, apart from Aaron, apart from the people that have been appointed and have been anointed as the priest of Israel, is anyone that uses it? He said, They shall be cut off. It means they shall die. The, the cause that is placed upon them is death. So you should understand the kind of things, what it means to use a mighty God. So if whether you are a believer, I say what everybody has access to go. I do say you have access to go. We are following the Bible. If you are led, probably you are called, and you are you are called and you are leading in the ministry, you are, can be used it. Let's follow the Bible. Because you shall be judged by the scripture. No, you not you are not going to church now. And the pastor has everybody bring anointing oil. No, you can carry anointing or go, go to church. Say, ah, oh, whether whether you are born again or not, you just carry and go to anointing oil to church. The pastor pray to you, you come please, especially any small thing like this, you apply the anointing oil. Your leg they pay you, you apply the anointing. Ah, he said, This anointing go work for me. Mosquito bite yourself. The thing so you can't carry another put where mosquito bite you. <laughs> you see, that is serious. <laughs> That's serious. You have now become the anointing have now become your God. So most of the Christians now they don't bother to say in Jesus' name in any matter again. In as when they have the anointing or they just go to anointing or where it is being placed, they carry them, put them for body, rub them. They will not call, they will not bother to pray. Because they know the, the man of God will pray to that until is, is a powerful man of God. See, you're good, they go papla. Hey, your son, daughter is sick. He said, ah, Come here, let me anoint you. You carry, you are not a, you begin to anoint, anoint the person, anoint, 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 anoint. Say the word, you go get it. No bother, no bother to come to come to God again. You don't bother again to say in Jesus' name. I command this sickness to leave. The name that has been given to us, you don't bother to use it anymore. You have not placed your belief on that anointing oil. That can lead you to a hellfire. Number two, I'm going to mention the use of water. I know it's so commonly in some church, which I will not mention their name whereby the pastor will tell them, bring water, pray to water for divine healing, you see. There's no sin in you asking somebody to preach. Maybe the person wanted to take the bath and you sanctify the water and the person use. No, there's no sin. But it's a situation whereby you now pray for like something to sustain you for some times. You now tell the person you bring the Rambolish water, you pray into it. You now tell the person that anytime you have any sickness, apply. It has become God's. 
is a witchcraft practice in the face and in the eyes of God. This is what the Lord told me. Some person must have done it before. Probably, you see, they are, they are, the question that arises is that what of the churches, like CAC, that are used to that water sanctifying water for the healing, is good. I didn't say it's not good, but this is the point I want you to know: that in every call, they are mandate, and that somebody have the mandate of somebody of something that doesn't qualify everybody to use it. For example. When I was called, one of the mandates I have as a healing instrument is the use of sand and water. And he also gave me rod in my revelation. The use of sand and water. And I can remember that the first miracle I did and the second miracle I did was the, the application of these two. I just start to take sand, take water, and bless them, put it together, and I use it. And the people get ill, including the, the young girl that died. I prayed to that water to the person, and the young girl came back to life instantly. Yes. What is applicable as a calling? God is the one giving an instructions. Let me give an example. A prophet was in the Bible. The Bible says something. It said, you as a prophet, as a priest of God, as a Nazareth of God, you must marry a virgin. By no means must you marry nobody that is not a virgin. And there's this a prophet in the Bible that God specifically tell him to marry a prostitute. That God now says somebody should go and marry a prostitute. Does he not say that he's telling all the prophets to be married prostitute? No. Now, it was because God has a purpose in his own calling. There's something God wanted to write. He wanted, if God wanted to bring something out of him, that is why he asked him to do that. Now, because the prophet now obey God, I go and do that. All that prophet will now begin to marry prostitutes. Do you think that God will not reject them? He will, because it is, it is a man at a before. There's nothing like a use of water. It is the time of apostle of Allah that God personally gave him an instructions. It has now become an idolic and witchcraft practice now in CSA. If you go to Ikejarakeji in Nigeria, if you will see the way they place water, anointing oil, letters, money, they place it in the front of a a a a a, a, a calf, like something like a, 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 something the mold that where he has received his calling, because they show that this is the place Apostle Allah will receive his calling. They begin to place water there, place anointing oil there, place letter there, place everything there. It has become a witchcraft practice. And God is very angry with this. No one that do this will enter heaven. Instruction, personal instruction, is different from individual instruction. Jesus did not give us rod for miracle. He did not give us clothes for miracle. He only gave us his name. The Bible says in the name of Jesus, Every name shall bow. Whether you use water, Jesus will answer you. Whether you don't use water, Jesus will answer you. If there are situations in the ministry whereby God Himself personally give an instructions, the instruction of somebody to use water, that is a leading of the Holy Spirit, not to take it as a witchcraft practice. There's a church that in a Sunday like this, deliverance service like that, there's no way they can do it. They will put water there, and not the oil, asking the pastor to pray to it, and we distribute it to the members. This is a sin to God. Let's not stop teaching the people to commit witchcraft in the church. 
let us stop it let us stop it let me excite Anasha. when moses went to the mountain to go and pray the bible said the israelite they make a calf a, 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 a calf yes and they make this image and they said we are we are going to use this image as a representative of god and they are worshiping the image and the god was so angry with the israelite that if not because of the of moses he will have destroyed them do you see and the moses came and the, he, he, he break he destroyed the calf do you know that is the same god who said do not worship anything that is created do not account it as an image of me and it's the same god who told moses when there is an an attack in this israelite camp god told moses to make something like a cross and put something like a snake there on that cross something like a cross in form of a snake that anyone that look onto that thing will get their healing it's the same god who said that they should not worship this and the same god who said every time they look on that thing they get their healing and moses did it and they were all healed from that attack the way when god gave an instruction he didn't see it you see he didn't see it as a kind of uh, uh, a witchcraft because he's the one that instructs. But when you begin to do something that he didn't instruct you, he can't eat as a sin, as a witchcraft practice, and it takes you directly to hellfire. Do you see? He takes it directly to hell. He take you directly to hell. So when you begin to use water, only water, I am not talking, I am not talking personally on the matter of the uh, the, old, uh, the the people who are going to faith touch only, but I'm talking to the saint in Christ. Believe in the name of Jesus. A pastor tell you that we are bring anointing. Let's pray to an to handkerchief. Bring handkerchief. Let's pray to handkerchief. You now pray. You now bring your handkerchief. Begin to pray, and they say anywhere you take your handkerchief to, miracle will be happening. It is a witchcraft practice. <laughs> they use they use Paul. Somebody went to Paul and 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 use uh, he used there's a mantle of Jesus uh, Paul he the sick. Yes, his battle man, he the sick. That doesn't give them a way out for witchcraft practice. Somebody asked, Pastor asked to bring a handkerchief and you bring pray on it and you say begin to use for miracle. It is a witchcraft practice. It is a big time witchcraft practice. Believing that God is on a particular altar. Listen to me very well. Believing that God is on a particular altar. So anytime you pass by that altar, you lean that to greet Jesus there. It is a witchcraft practice. It's a witchcraft. Because this altar is where there is the angels are there. You now you always lean that to go and greet Jesus Christ there. The question is that the one that is inside you is it fake Jesus Christ? Okay, outside the church, Jesus Christ is not there. It is only that altar that Jesus Christ is that you must go and lead them. This is what the Bible was saying about you must not worship. He come to his level whereby he said anything inside heaven. I am not mentioning the Catholic because already the Catholic will not make heaven. There's nothing we want. So that one is just. You see, they can't make heaven. It's, I'm not placing the judgment, but they are totally against. They have come against the will of God. They have come against the commandment of God. 
they are totally worshiping witchcraft witchcraft practice purely it's a witchcraft practice purely so they can make it over according to the bible they come into heaven <laughs> do you know that using of drugs is a witchcraft practice ah, which what is this man of god saying again wishing of which using of drug is a witchcraft practice again yes using of drugs when your child gets sick when your child gets sick and the first thing you have to bring is tell him that well okay you're having a date bring me prastamon juice prastamon or you see a brother I don't, uh, what is happening to you malaria go and use this one you have deviated from god you have believed you have carried your faith in that drug I'm not saying that you taking drug is a particularly maybe sinful or something, but a act of you believing, making it false than God. You have not even prayed for the brother. You have not even called the elders to pray for the brother. The first thing is applying drug. God will be angry with that. So I'm bringing your attention to what when you get to the throne of God that can send you to hell. For it has already been sending some people to hell. It's a sin. Do you also know that one of the witchcraft practice is when a prophet tells you that go to a river, go and take one water there, the water of a uh, uh, salt water, mix it with another water in the another water there. Yeah. Then begin to call three psalms there and begin to use it to bath. Do you know it's a witchcraft practice? It is. We have been given a name at, at the mention of the name of Jesus. Every name shall bow. Every name. It must bow. And every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That name is what is given to us, not water. Not water. It is that name that was given to us. Do you also know that leaning down, being on your knee to be talking to pastor, you, are, you have already taken him as God. And you and that your pastor, you will go to heaven together. Anytime you want to talk to your pastor, all of you will have to lean down. Uh, Daddy, uh, this thing is what is happening to me. Uh, I want you to pray for me. This is my problem. My brother, my sister, you go, you go continue with that problem. And still go to heaven on top. Because you have taken a mere human being as God. The Bible says, when Peter was summoned, there's a place where, the, oh my God, Peter was summoned and he went to preach to a Gentile. He went there to go and preach. And that Gentile is one of the high chief in command, in, in soldier, as a army. His name is Cornelius. He is a high chief, a high commander. You know when we are talking about it, uh, uh, how can we, how can we, uh, 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 um, I, can, uh, I don't want, I don't know how to use this uh, so, uh, soldier, uh, commander, uh, this thing, maybe general, commander, or something like that. Inspector General, or something like that. That is the kind of position, position this man is. He's a high chief, somebody who they respect. Even whenever he, you see, the king of that time, they respected him. He's a high, one of the high positions 
the Bible says, when he saw Peter came coming to his house, after the an, an angel of God must have, have, have instructed him to go and call him, when he saw Peter coming into his house, the Bible said he prostrated and oh, he prostrated before Peter because he could not withstand that a man of God stepped into my house. He prostrated to Peter. And Peter said something. He said, get up of her. Ah. We are not talking about the issue of Peter trying to say he should not greet him. But the attitude, the kind of uh, the kind of respect he gave to Peter is a, the same respect he's giving to God. He said, stand up. Peter made something. He said, I am a woman being like you. <laughs> he said, I am a woman being like you. Somebody prostrated for Peter. He said, stand up. I am a woman being like you. Do you know how many pastors you are leaning that in talk? And they too will sit in the seat and say, hey, hey. yeah, keep talking. Yes, yes. What's your problem? Like God. If you did not repent, you will rot in hell. Pastors, you are evil. If you not repent, you will rot in hell. A elderly mama, father, a elderly ma, old enough to be your grandfather, we need that for you and we be on that knee talking to you. You will not even say, ah, mama, stand up, ah, who am I? Ah, mama, stand up. You'll be listening and say, hey, mama, I'm listening to you. That year, if you did not depend, that year will we, we, we become deaf. Because you have placed yourself in the hierarchy, hierarchy of God, like you are God on earth. Do you hear what the theory wise man says? Say, drag me second and beginning. He said, We shall bow to no man, we shall bow to no idol except God. Do you know what a man wanted, why he wanted to kill? Uh, what, what is this, this man's name? He wanted to kill this uh, this man, Mordecai. The reason he wanted to kill him was because whenever he's passing, everybody will bow down to a man as a respect. But this Mordecai, he could stand up. Tete. And this armor was like, Who are you? Everybody are bound down for me. You are not bound down. Who are you? And I'm, uh, Mordecai said, he said, I will only bow down to God Almighty, not to a mere man. I'm not saying, I'm not disputing the fact that you are respecting the man of God. I'm not coming against it. But the act whereby, if you do talk to him, on me, you will not listen to you. It is a era of pride. Did you know what happened to a king in the Bible? King Herod. <laughs> he, the Bible says in the Act of Apostles that when he was having a meeting with the communities, the people, he said, as he was talking, his voice looked at like an angel, and the people were praising him, saying that your voice looked like an angel, and it was like he was proud. His heart was high. And the Bible said the Lord struck him. And my God began to come out of his life, of his body, life and direct alive. And he died on the spot. That's how serious. God is taking pride. You are a pastor. I didn't say you should not greet your pastor. I didn't say you should not honor God in his life. But don't take him as your God. Some will not pray until they say, Pastor, 
You cannot even talk to God on your own. On the pastor say hey, you are blessed. Ah, I believe it. I believe it. I receive. I receive. These are kind of witchcraft that is taking people to hell. I want to talk this to all the churches, all the Christians in all over the world. I want to tell you this. If there is a pastor that is requesting money from you for you before you can see him, or there's a particular pastor that you have paid money to just because you wanted to see him, or because or he showed you anointing water, anointing oil, anointing handkerchief, anointing wristwatch, anointing whatsoever. Be careful of such a pastor. Is a satanic pastor. It's not among the people God called. God doesn't require money for miracle. God doesn't require money before they see, he, he see you. He's a satanic man or satanic woman. In such churches, you should live there. And you that you have paid, you are paid to satanic bank. And you are going to hell yourself if you didn't repent. I pray the Lord God will help you in the name of Jesus. This is a point of contact of talking to all the celestial church of Christ, all the Kerubu and Serafu, all the Sele, all the these people, white garment churches that are using candles. Can, using of candle will take it to hell. Ah, but this and this are, it will take it to hell. Conjunction or making an incantations from the book of six and seven book of Moses will take it to hell. A pastor telling you to go and bath and he begin to bath you. See your nakedness, it will take you to hell. You are about to going to hell. Any pastor telling you that he has to help you to do some in prayer, incantation, and they do something like cross for you to be used, he's taking you to it's a witchcraft practice. Any church you go that you have to hold cross, you have to hold cross in your hand to pray. It is a witchcraft practice. You are going to hell for that. Any church you are going that you have to read Mary, help Mary help her song, a big prayer, you are going to hell with it. Anywhere you are going and you are using the name of your pastor to pray instead of the name of Jesus Christ, it's a witchcraft practice. You're going, you are going to hell for that. I'm telling you the secret. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you will not end up in hell. God bless you. God be with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. This is a message that God asked me to give to you. And I pray in the name of Jesus, any prophetic coven of darkness that you have entered, the Lord will set you free in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you, the Lord be with you. I remain opposed to Peter Daniel. Please subscribe to the channel. Don't just watch. There are many things, there are many revelations that are still coming. Subscribe to the channel and press the like button and the notification button so that you can see more of the video we are going to be sending. There are many things that is called, it is a sin that we will be showing you in this channel. Not only that, there are many revelations we are yet to, 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 to put on net. We are also doing Zoom. We do our heaven and hell Zoom by 9 a.m. to 10.30. You can join us every Monday to Saturday. And on Sunday, we do our worship service. Not only that, for those who need deliverance, Ely, and whatsoever, or whether you are you are, one, you are in one way or the other having a weak point that is affecting your life, you can also join us in our night vigils that holds by 2 a.m. Nigerian time. 2 a.m. Nigerian time to 3 a.m. in the morning, in the midnight. The Lord God will bless you and be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Remain blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.